Hello friends and welcome to this week's edition of Light Up the Holidays. Today we'll be talking about winter solstice. It is an ancient holiday that has been celebrated around the world for thousands of years. On winter solstice, which this year we'll be celebrating on December 21st, the earth is tilted away from the sun on its furthest point in the northern hemisphere. So the earth rotates on an axis that's a little tilted. And throughout our seasons, they change because the earth goes further away from the sun and closer to the sun. When it's far away from the sun, it's winter. And when it's close to the sun, it's summer. So on winter solstice, it is its furthest tipping point away from the sun. So that means that it has the least amount of daylight and it has the longest night. But after winter solstice night, the next morning, it's a little lighter. So the light lasts a little bit longer because the earth is slowly tipping back towards the sun, trying to get towards summer and summer solstice, which is the longest day and the shortest night. And the earth goes back and forth every year as it rotates around the sun. So people have been celebrating this holiday for thousands of years to celebrate the sun coming back and warming the earth back up because those nights are cold and we're excited to have that sun come back, right? So December 30, this, I'm sorry, December 21st this year, we'll be celebrating winter solstice. So let's dive into our book and find out how people have been celebrating this holiday. And as we read it, you might see some familiar traditions. We take some of those traditions and we use them for Christmas and other holidays in December too. See, I told you that they all kind of mix together and we all like to celebrate the same. And we take ideas from each other and that's okay. That's how we learn and how we grow. It's okay to share ideas with everyone. So we'll be learning about how to celebrate winter solstice and we will be making a lantern that you can um, light up on your winter solstice night. And don't forget to look at your recipes and make some wasabi, which is a apple cider drink. It's a spiced cider and it's yummy and it warms you up on those cold nights. So let's get started. The Shortest Day, Celebrating the Winter Solstice by Wendy Beffer, illustrated by Jesse Reich. In late autumn, in the northern part of the world, squirrels hide nuts, foxes grow thick fur coats, and flocks of birds fly to warmer places. The sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Each day it appears lower in the southern sky. As the sun gets lower and lower, the north gets less and less daylight. The air grows colder. Chickadees fluff their feathers to keep warm. Woodchucks hibernate in their burrows. And white-tailed deer nuzzle through the snow to find the last blades of grass. On short winter days, children bundle in warm clothes and walk through a frosty white world, dragging long shadows behind them. On long winter nights, families eat dinner while it's dark outside. Children wonder when the days will get long again so they can play outside after dinner like they did in summer. In the north, on or around December 21st, the sun reaches its lowest point on the horizon, making the day the shortest day of the year. Like all days, December 21st has 24 hours, but it's called the shortest day because it has the fewest hours of daylight. The shortest day, called the winter solstice, is the beginning of winter. And in some places, winter means cold, nose-nipping weather. The earth tilts as it moves around the sun and the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun. 
The north gets less heat and light than the southern part. Long ago, people didn't understand how the earth tilts and moves around the sun. They didn't understand why each day had less sunshine than the day before. Some believed that evil spirits made the sun go away. People feared that the sun wouldn't shine on them anymore, making their world cold and dreary dark. They needed the sun's warmth and light. So they did their so did their plants, which they needed for food. They held ceremonies that lasted for weeks to persuade their gods to bring the sun back. Over the years, people noticed that after short days, the days got gradually longer. Joyous people bathed in the sun's warmth and light. They celebrated their harvests. About 5,000 years ago, people who studied the sky noticed that day after day, the sun set in different places on the western horizon. They discovered that when the sun set farthest south, that was the shortest day. These early astronomers planned to mark the shortest day. Then each year, people would know when the days would start getting longer again. On the day when the sun reached its southernmost point on the horizon, the astronomers carried out their plan. Workers stacked stones to frame the setting sun. They made a special opening, like a keyhole, or the eye of a needle. When the setting sun's rays beamed through that opening, people knew that the shortest day was over. Days gradually got longer for the next six months. When the sun appeared farthest to the north, its rays shone through another keyhole. People knew it was the longest day of the year, the first day of summer. In China, over 3,000 years ago, astronomers measured shadows to determine the shortest day. The longest shadows appeared on the shortest day because the sun was at its lowest point in the sky. They knew that the, as the sun appeared higher in the sky, the shadows would get shorter and the days would get longer. Over 2,000 years ago, Romans celebrated the shortest day with festivals and merrymaking. They gave evergreen branches to friends and as a sign of good luck. Evergreen wreaths decorated their doors. Since these plants stayed green when others turned brown, they reminded the Romans of the coming spring. Mistletoe and holly hung in their homes because plants that survived the harsh winter were symbols of life. Many people believed these plants would bring strength to their families. About 1,000 years ago, Europeans celebrated the winter solstice. Druid priests of England and Ireland decorated oak trees with golden apples and candles to represent harvest and light. In Sweden, Festival of Light celebrated the return of longer days. On St. Lucia's Day, girls wore crowns of evergreens and candles to rekindle the sun's fire as they delivered warm buns to family and friends. Boys went from door to door singing their neighbors for a few coins. Around the same time in history, Incas of Peru marked the shortest day with a festival in honor of the sun. At dawn, when the sun first appeared, shouts of happiness rang out. Then the Incas used the shiny surface to reflect the sun's rays on the fluffy, dry cotton. The sun heated the cotton and made it burst into flame. They carried it, the fire, to their temples and kept it burning on the altars all year. Because it came from the one of their gods, the sun.
Today, people still celebrate at the beginning of winter by decorating their houses, lighting the darkness, gathering together, and exchanging gifts. They no longer worry that the sun will disappear forever. People know that days get colder when their part of the earth tilts away from the sun. They know that the days get shorter when the sun appears lower in the sky. People celebrate the shortest day because longer days follow. Flock of birds will, flocks of birds will return. Seedling oak trees will sprout and children can play outside after dinner. For more than 5,000 years, people have welcomed the winter solstice because it's a new beginning. Solstice facts. The earth is always spinning like a top. It takes 24 hours for the earth to turn one time. When the earth turns toward the sun, it's day. When it turns away from the sun, it's night. It takes 12 months for the earth to go around the sun. The tilt of the earth on its axis as it rotates determines how the sun's rays hit the earth and what season it is. Over 750 years ago, the word solstice first used, over 750 years ago, the word solstice was first used for the first time when the sun seemed to stop moving. Solstice comes from Latin, the language of the ancient Romans. In Latin, sol means sun, and sister means to stop. In the northern part of the world, the winter solstice usually occurs on December 21st, but the earth doesn't move at a steady speed around the sun. So sometimes the winter solstice occurs on December 20th 22nd or 23rd. Equinox comes from two Latin words, equi meaning equal, and nox meaning night. On the spring equinox and autumn equinox, day and night have equal hours. Winter solstice. The sun is low in the sky and shining from the southernmost position. Spring equinox. Summer solstice. The sun is high in the sky and shining from the northernmost position. Autumn equinox. Those are the four seasons in the northern hemisphere. The end. Let's get started on our Winter Solstice Lantern. Now what we'll need is tissue paper. I have white because it's more wintry. And a balloon. Glue. I have the big jug. And then a little water to thin the glue. And then of course a light to put in the lantern. So we're going to start off by mixing our glue. Now if you picked up the kit then you have the glue that I portioned out for you from this giant jug. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit in this bowl because we need to thin it with water. We're gonna make a runny solution for this. So I'm gonna roll my sleeves up here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to thin out the glue. And there is no perfect science here, my friends. We're just gonna we're just gonna mix it until we think it looks good. Because the instructions I looked up just said thin out the glue with water. So it's up to our own discretion. Let's see. That is a nice soupy paste. I think it needs to be a little little thinner. So I'm going to make it a little thinner. And at the end we'll find out if it works or not, right? That's the fun thing about crafts. Half of it's an experiment anyways. It let's you use your imagination. All right. I 
think a little more water. That's what I think. All right. You see how that's much thinner than it was before? Yep, that'll do. And right, now we're going to blow up our balloon. All right, I just blew it up a little bit. I didn't put much air in it at all. And that'll make a lantern about this big. So, yeah, cute little hand lantern. All right, so I'm gonna tie off the balloon. Like so. All right, here is my balloon. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to take our tissue paper, tear it up into strips, little pieces, like so, and then we're going to dip them in our glue, our gluey water, so they're nice and saturated like that, and then we're going to apply it to the balloon, like so, and we're going to do that all over the is real messy. I also saw that you can, once you get a layer down, you can put different um, like evergreen branches, little ones of course, or a little, or leaves or things from nature to decorate your lantern. I could not find any evergreen branches in the library yard, so we're just going to have a regular old white lantern, but I think that'll be fun. There we go. Now, once we get this all done, we're going to have to let it dry just before we pop the balloon and see if it held. So, but here I am. I'm going to do it halfway up all the way around. All right. I'm going to hit the fast forward button. So it's speedy fast. All right, now I've covered the entire bottom half in my tissue paper and watered down glue solution. So just go over it and make sure it's all smoothed down. You don't want any big air bubbles in there or else it'll crack. So just go through. Now if you noticed, it gets gets real soggy real fast. So I found that if you just start adding dry tissue paper over the wet tissue paper, um, it absorbs some of the liquid and then you can always just take your finger, they have a little more, like I said, you could do it with a paintbrush also, but fingers are more fun. It's always more fun to be messy. All right, well this looks good. Now we have to let it dry. And then once we let it dry, we're going to pop our balloon and see if our lantern holds. All right, let's 
let her dry. Here we go. Our lantern has dried. Now it's hard. Hopefully it's hardened all the way through. I'm not sure if there's some still wet spots or not. But I'm impatient, so I'm going to pop it and see if we get our lantern. All right. Close your ears. Here we go. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I don't even have to worry about peeling it or anything. It did it itself. All right, so there's a little still stuck on there. So gently, gently pull that off. Balloon, gone, shell, voila. And now you have a beautiful lantern to put your light in. Oh, look at that. It worked! Huzzah! A beautiful decorative candle. Let's turn off the lights and see what happens. Ooh, that's beautiful. Well, I'm excited. Have a fantastic winter solstice. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.